a spear in his side. Yet it was a heartache that made him cry. He gave his life so you would understand. Is there any way you could say no to this man? If Christ himself was standing here, his face full of glory and eyes full of tears, he hold out his arms with his nail printed hands. Is there any way you could say no to this man? How could you look in his tear-stained eyes, knowing it's you he's thinking of? Would you tell him you're not ready to give him your life? Could you say you don't think you need his love? Jesus is here with his arms open wide. You can see him with your heart if you'll stop looking with your eyes. He's left it up to you. He's done all that he can. Is there any way you could say no to this man? How could you look in his tear-stained eyes? Knowing it's you he's thinking of. Effort. The danger of drifting is not limited to the, to the physical. Okay, it's not just a physical thing you can drift, but you can also drift spiritually. Let's read Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. If you can open your Bibles. If somebody has it, they can uh, start reading it. Just Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. Right. It says, we must, in my, in my version, it said, says, most careful attention to something. You have to actually pay attention. It requires effort. If you're driftwood, you don't care. You're just going to let it go. It's just drifting along. Whatever. There is no effort to driftwood. It just goes. Sadly, it's not uncommon for Christians to drift towards anywhere. It doesn't really matter. If you're driftwood, you don't care. You may even be here, but you're just drifting. So let's talk about things we should know about drifting. Does anybody have any thoughts about drifting? Yes, Vern. Right. Little by little. Exactly. Yes. Right. Just swirling around in circles, stuck in a whirlpool. Yeah. Yes. More likely to stumble. Yep. Yeah. Most careful attention. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Jim. Your foot can get hung up. Uh, you know, it, it seems like everything is going along well, and just one day you just find yourself stuck somewhere. Yeah, you just get stuck. Not even realize you're stuck. All right, good. Um, so, like I said in the beginning, the first thing I said was driftwood, it's easy, it requires no effort. You don't have to do anything. In the case of a boat, you could just stop rowing. Why not? You could, uh, the same is also true for Christians, which is why we are told to, like in Hebrews 2.1, pay most careful attention. Now, I found this uh, very interesting. I was, I was typing this and putting this together. Um, <laughs> I made typos, all right? I'm not perfect. Uh, even, I even texted one time, and I had a typo in there, and something popped up and said, hey, are you sure this word is correct? Who here has ever had autocorrect on their, on their phone, correct them, and save their life? <laughs> All right? I've had it plenty of times where somebody put effort into creating a product 
that allows me to not send terrible things in text messages. I can actually write and say, oh no, that's what I meant. Or how do I spell that? And it's constantly there in the background working. And I'm so thankful it's working because I will have sent something that would be terrible, not at all what I meant. And yet something is there in the background working and letting me know that that's not correct. That's not exactly right. Are you sure? Sometimes I'll have to yell at it and say, no, really, this is an acronym. It's OK. But I got to tell it. Okay. So drifting requires no effort. You don't have to do anything. You just float. Float along. Sometimes it's an unconscious process. You could be drifting completely unaware that you are actually drifting. You didn't realize it. A boat floating in the ocean just goes with the current, wherever it goes. And if you have no idea how to navigate with the stars, you have no idea how to rot, you know, figure out the currents or the wind or when it's supposed to go, you're just going to float, thinking you're going where you thought you were going. Same in a plane. Have you ever flown above the clouds in the middle of the day? You have no idea where you're going. You think you do. If you don't have navigational charts or you don't have things to read to figure it out, you have no idea where you're going. You're just floating. You're drifting. I think uh, many Christians can slowly drift away like Vern said. It's a slow fade. It's one thing here, one thing there. And you, you may not even realize it again. You may be doing it unaware. You may just be coasting along. You know, I thought about driftwood and how it can get all the way to the ocean. It's possible to get all the way to the ocean without hitting a rock, without hitting anything. It could just make it right out there. Beautiful, like your life. You have no problems. Everything's going good in your life. You must be doing the right thing. But if you're driftwood, you're not. You're just drifting along. Wherever it goes is wherever you go. Wherever the current goes, you go. I think uh, many churches get into this as well. One thing here, one thing there. Maybe one less scripture reading. Maybe one less verse you read. Until one day you find you've been removed from scripture. Pull. Yeah, yeah, Jim. Right. Sometimes there are things that set people and make them leave that tree. You know, maybe they've decided to, to jump, jump, jump into the water and see what it's like. Yes, Kathleen. Right. Right. Everybody else is doing it. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that in, in churches where churches tend to, you think they're on track, and then they just start, I don't know, accepting more traditions than what the Bible says. You know, they say, they'll, they'll go along and say, well, you know, this minister or this person said this, and I'm going to follow that. And they just leave Scripture behind in a wake that, maybe was maybe had good intentions maybe there was a hey this is this is something positive i think this is they think this will work and they just move away from what scripture says to do and it's unconscious sometimes that people follow it thinking this seems right sure and they don't really catch on to what's going on uh, yes burn uh, another word for drifting i think is complacency complacency yeah 
that we leave it up to someone else to do it. Right. And we need all parts to do it. Yeah. Yep. Being complacent is definitely a an effect. Has an effect. Um, yes. Yes, Nancy. Right. Yeah. And she said, "No, I'm good. Uh, you know, I, I love everyone, and I have and God's in here." Right. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. And I think that even within the church, you know, we have to be careful. Paul says, "Lest you fall." Right. Know, we're trying to bring people. Sure. No, I agree. That's. Yeah. I think you know. At this point, sometimes you might even be shocked if they were if they sat there and said, "Oh yeah, where do you worship?" Yes. You, you almost yeah. wouldn't know what to say. You'd be like, "Uh, well, um, well, yeah, I total yeah. blank. Like what?" Because we've been, we our culture has pushed us in this way that we've heard it so many times, and it's not a. It's like, well, I feel like God's in my heart. How do you tell somebody? I don't know about that. No, like, how do you? How do you? You know, it requires effort for you to just make an effort to say, I'm going to go work out and I hope, God, that you put someone right here because I will talk to them. And it's like, God's like, all right, I'm going to make you work for this. That's right. And you're like, all right, but you've got to put effort into that. Just some effort. But the Bible doesn't say some. <laughs> it says make every, it says make every effort. And I think of, of all the struggles maybe that I have, I got a lot of them. Yeah. One of them is that I don't make the most every effort. I don't go the, the full length. I mean, you know, if you were to make most effort, you would have chased her out to her car. No, you got, listen to me. No, no, listen. Can I have your number? Can I call you? Like you stalk her almost. And, and you know, I, I, feel, I feel like the world doesn't want to connect. They don't want to connect. They feel like this is a they're their own driftwood. Like, I'm drifting along. I'm good. You know, maybe I hit a rock here or there, but whatever. You know, I'll just go the other way then. Sure. You know, and I almost feel like those that, that say, okay, sure, I'll go with you, just to, because they're drifting and they're just, you happen to push them that way. Now they're drifting into this and they're, they're here, but they're drifting. Uh-huh. Yep. I checked it off my list. Or, yeah, I, I, I read the Bible today. You know, because it was in Bible class or because it was up there, you know, that's just drifting along. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a, a verse that will accompany Jim. Better not be one of mine. <laughs> okay, <we'll laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's in John 15. It says, I am the true vine. My father is a gardener. He right. cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. That's right. While every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that I will even work for it. Yep. So the thing is, if you're fruitful, you're going to be better. Right. If you're not, if you're then in the branch, you will go to walk. Yeah. Right. You may be cut off, in which case. Now, you may be cut off, and you're floating down the stream, never to ever hit a rock, and think you're okay. You know, birds may land on you, and you're thinking, oh, great, I'm, I'm holding birds up. Yay, you know, you're all good, but just drifting along, skating through life. I mean, 
I know people like that, literally that at their jobs will do the bare minimum to skate along. Like they don't really want to be there. They don't want to work. And I'm like, all right, that's work. You know, I see my kids, you know, pick up the clothes off your floor. Uh huh. And they pick them up and they land on their bed. Okay, well, we got to put them away. You give kids a, a job to do and they can't, they do the bare minimum at best sometimes. It'd give me a heart attack if they did the thing right, you know? <laughs> so let's go on to the next piece. Um, we never really drift upstream or against the tide. Why? There's no point. You're driftwood. Why would you want to go against the tide? Why would you want to go upstream? Um, faithfulness to the Lord is like rowing upstream. You're going faithfully hoping that that's the end result. And you're doing it. And I also thought this is a good analogy for people who are, are doing just this. Slow roll. Slow row. They're rowing, but are they going upstream? They're slowly going downstream. Not as fast. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, I row. You know, I'm, I'm moving. I'm not just drifting. I'm doing stuff. But are you really doing stuff? Or are you just slowly going backwards? Not as fast as everybody else. Just slowly going backwards. Uh, open to 2 Peter. All right, we're going to look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Again, the idea that we never drift upstream or against the tide. Can somebody read that for us when they get it? Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. The idea of uh, making every effort is something I alluded to before and something uh, Peter talks about. And it's something that, you know, I definitely struggle with. You know, I, I, I feel like, you know, I can make an effort to talk to somebody, but my, and I don't, I always, I always seem to like put it on myself as more like, I, that's not my style or my type of personality where you know, oh, I, I don't want to get in people's business or I don't want to, you know, people to think that I'm intrusive on them. And that's me. That's my problem. Like, that's not real. That's me making that up in my head. And I've, I've, I'm slowly gaining the confidence to, to actually ask people and be a little bit more direct. And that takes effort. It really does. And what I think here is it's a... It's the make every effort is a, it's a tough pill to swallow because how do you know when you've made every effort? How do you really know? And in order to do that, you need to work it to find out. You can't just say, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure I made every effort. You know, you need to actually do it. And that takes effort. It really does. I mean, it's, it's a... I've had to do it recently. I've had to talk to somebody and really tell them, I, I know what you say you feel, but it's not in scripture. I don't know how to tell you this. Like, and it hurt. Every bone in my body just hurt. Like, I'm not telling you this because 
I don't love you. I'm not telling you this because I want some power over you or it's a trip. Man, it hurts. I wish I didn't. I wish I could just drift along with you and say that my feelings, even though they're different than your feelings, it's okay because whatever, whatever. And it hurt. And it was a, a stinging feeling that traced me that whole night. I just felt like I couldn't sleep. You know, my stomach was in knots. Like I, I said it and I said it with love but I felt like it was like it was like I was telling them that that they're lying or that their feelings weren't really their feelings and it, it just took effort it takes effort and it it hurts sometimes yes Vern Exactly. And the, the sad part is, and this is just my opinion, is that we have a lot of people who may be working on those, but they're not really working on them. And as a result, they never actually do anything. And so there's, there's got to be some, if you're really going to work on those, you really are, then you'll be doing something. It doesn't take that long. Um, a, you had your hand up, Stan. Yep. That's right. Right. Yeah. Right. Definitely building a foundation when you when you work on these. Um, yes, you can say again. Right. Right. That's true. You can't be ineffective if you're not doing one of these things. Um, I, I thought of this as a good analogy for for this time. Um, anybody here ever have a cup that leaked in their house? You put something in it. I mean, you fill it up. You're like, I got this cup, and I'm going to put this special drink in it that I love that no one else in the house is allowed to have. Okay, and I put it in there. Here's my cup. Here's my cup of cherry limeade. All right, don't touch it. It's my cup. And, and I leave, and, and I come back, you know, maybe, maybe an hour later, and it's all over the place. And you're like, what happened to my beautiful cherry limeade? What happened to it? And you got this cup, and it's leaking. Like, I can't believe it, this cup leaked out my beautiful drink. Or maybe it was five minutes later it leaked out, okay? You've got, we're all leaking cups, every one of us. You fill yourself with as much of this goodness and kindness and perseverance, but the world seeps in or it seeps out. And you've got to continue to increase your measure. You've got to constantly put something in or it will empty. I've had cups that, you know, you get the fast food cups, you leave them in your car, and you come out later and you lift it up, and the bottom has released itself, and so is all the drink. And you're like, I can't believe it, my cup. Okay, you, we are all leaking cups. And constantly we need to increase the measure of all of these things. I need to work on self-control all the time, because I may all of a sudden encounter something that I have not prepared for. And now I need to practice my self-control, and I may lose it. Ah, oh, I'm a leaking cup. I gotta go read more scripture. I gotta work on this more. Okay? So I just I thought that, 
you know, we are all kind of like leaking cups in this area. Um, like Julie said, we must continue to grow. We have to grow. We can't keep drifting along. In order to grow, we have to read more. We have to do more. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 17 through 18. Someone read that, please. Amen. Um, you've been forewarned. You've been told. All right. But if you're driftwood, it doesn't matter. You're just going to drift along. You're going to hear it and be like, okay, that's cool. I get it. I'm going to keep drifting. But I get it. Um, but it just doesn't say grow in knowledge. Grow in grace. How do we grow in grace? What? Thankful, humble, that's good. That's good. How else do we grow in grace? Come on. Yeah. yeah. Understanding what God did for us, yeah. Yes, Jim. That's right. How much effort does that take, Jim? It's a lot of effort. The moment you stop growing, you start going backwards or downstream. And like I said before, you could be rowing, but very slowly, not putting forth much effort. And you're going downstream too, just slower than other people. But you're still going downstream. So I want to go over a couple of the things before we continue on. Drifting requires what? Over here on this side. What does it require? What? No effort? Good. Unconscious process? We never drift upstream or against the tide. And the speed downstream always increases. When you're at the top of a stream, it's slow, it moves. But as you get closer to that waterfall, it's too late. I mean, if you're driftwood, you don't care. I mean, you're going anyway. Doesn't matter. That's where it's taking you. You're just going. Oh, there's a, there's a, there's a waterfall. Cool. I'm in. You just, you're just going. If you're not, and you're driftwood, it's too late. You're already there. I mean, if you're in a rowboat, maybe you can start rowing. But if you've never rowed before, or you didn't bring it with you, or you didn't plan, it's too late. You're going over that. You're going over the edge. Like when you're in a plane and you lose sight of where you're supposed to go. How are you going to discern which way to go? You're just drifting, just floating, like a hang glider. Who's ever ridden in a hang glider? Who's ever used a kite? Anybody here ever used a kite before? Who's ever dri yeah. And, and how do you get a kite to work? Tell me how you get a kite to work. You got to work at it. You got to work at it, yeah. Yeah, sometimes a little harder than others. All right. What makes a kite go? Wind. Which way does the wind have to go for your kite to go up? You mean you have to pull it against the wind? What if you were trying to fly a plane and the wind was going as fast as your plane was going and you're going with the wind? Right down. A plane needs wind to fly into. It needs something to go pull under. And if you're flying at the same speed as everybody else, you're going to crash. There's no escape from the end. If you're neglecting what you need to do. Yes. Right. Yes, Tina. Yes, Tina. I said Tina.
right? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. I, th I think that, uh, you know, a after reading this and thinking about, about the, you know, the waterfall and, all, and like you're saying, um, we always want to, I, I always want to mention that there's that, there are cases where God will come in and save you at the edge of that waterfall. Like, I, you have to believe it, sure. Um, you know, you go past that bridge, you're like, well, God will save me if I get into more trouble. Like, what? Why would you, why would you even put him in that position where he's got to do that? You know, why would you push your, 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 why would you do that? And so I, I, even though I wrote that and I feel like, you know, well, God will always save you. That's true. But, but why? Why get yourself in that situation? Why drift all the way downstream and get past that point where there's nowhere to go? Yes, yeah, Dan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're reaching out your hand like, I'll, I'll grab you out of the water. You're at the point and no, I'm not. What waterfall? <laughs> right. Lucille, you had your hand up? No. You did have your hand up. I Doesn't count. <laughs> Once your hand goes above your shoulder, you've been logged in and you, you ha now have to say something. <laughs> All right. Um, so as we move further and further downstream, we care less and less. And I've seen people do this. This is like what, what Vern was saying. It's a slow fade. You know, you, you have an opportunity to learn something or to do something and, and you, you don't take advantage of it. And less and less, you have the care. And because caring requires effort. You actually have to have effort or, just, or do something in order to care about people. I mean, if I don't care about anybody, I'm just drifting along. I'll cut you off on the highway, it doesn't matter. I'm just drifting along, whatever, you know. Um, another thing here is it's dangerous to others. Your drifting is actually dangerous to others, okay? A ship drifting is a hazard to, on, to people on the sea. If you're in a car and you decide, we're all going this way, I'm in the middle lane, there's two other cars around me, I can text now. I have these other cars, still bounce, I'll bounce off them. Like, what? That's crazy talk. <laughs> You'll kill yourself or somebody else. Let's look at uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, 1 through 4, sorry. Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. And I thought of all sorts of analogies for this. And it's just, I mean, if you actually contemplate what, what would happen if you were just drifting along, if a boat was just drifting along. The only positive I can see from a boat drifting along is that at least you know where the undercurrent is. At least you as a, an observer of that boat floating along would know, oh, that's where the undercurrent will take me. If I just let it go, I'll follow them. Ephesians chapter 6, 1 through 4. Someone want to read that? Nice and loud. So I read this, and it's something that it touched my heart, was the, uh, 
the idea that if, if I'm a parent and I drift, I'm losing opportunities to teach my children. I teach my kids how to do lots of little things. I teach them how to use a drill. I teach them, Trisha may laugh, I teach them how to fold clothes. I don't actually do it, I, I teach them how to do it. Um, I teach them how to, how to clean dishes, okay? I teach them how to break the yard, um, to do all these, all these things in life because I want them to, to grow and to learn these. Um, the Bible doesn't tell me to do that. It actually tells me to train them what? The instruction of the Lord. Like, if I don't use opportunities with my children to teach them instructions on the Lord, I'm losing these golden opportunities. Now, you may be sitting there, you may not have kids. Some of you may not have kids. You may not have kids here. The kids may have grown and be old. They're not here. I have kids. My brothers have kids. Are you losing opportunities to train them, to teach them? We have classes downstairs. The little kids, they want to learn about Jesus. They're here. And we have adults that do not teach those classes. Okay? We do. And I'm not sure why. Really not. And, and it, I know that there are, are people that teach them all the time. Okay? Which is good because they're good at it. All right? But they didn't start out being just good at it. They had to work at it. And if you're in here and you're thinking to yourself, wow, I've squandered a lot of opportunities to teach these children or to teach children about Jesus. Go down and audit a class. Audit it, like you do in college. You know, you can go, and go into a class and you don't actually take the test and you don't answer the questions, but you can learn. And learn what a second or third grader does in a class. Don't squander opportunities to teach. Otherwise, you're a danger. I mean, people will never know you as being spiritual. And they may look up to you in other areas. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And I've got to speed it up. i only got two minutes. Um, so I'll, I'll read this. So Christ himself gave, gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach uni unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of, the pe of people in their deceitful scheming. If I don't teach my children God's instructions, if I don't do that, they're going to be tossed about. Chasing every wind of doctrine. If you don't help teach my children, they may be tossed to and fro, not knowing which way is the right way. Oftentimes my children, when they lie or cheat or something or take something or steal, they don't realize that it affects other people. They're in this circle of me, and, and that's where we are. That's where they are. And it's sad because when I tell them that, it kind of like opens their eyes. And I'm, I'm trying to tell you that <laughs> if you don't help teach others, if we don't help teach others, we're a danger to them. We may lead them to where they're tossed to and fro. And all that's going to end up is in a wreck. Hebrews chapter 2, 2, for, two through 3 says... For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? For those who are drifting spiritually, and through their own neglect, there shall be no escape for a just punishment. That's not me saying it. I wish I didn't have to say that. I wish that wasn't true. But it is. And that's what God said. I want to go through the, I got one minute. I want to go through what we talked about here. Drifting requires no effort. It's an unconscious process. It can be. We never really drift upstream or against the tide. 
Speed downstream will always increase. And we're a danger to others if we drift. And in the end, it leads to a wreck. Yes, Julie. Right. Right. It takes effort to be here on a Wednesday night. Yet some people just skate along. Even I know every, I know you guys are here for Bible class, but think about those that are not here for Bible class. They 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 only show up at worship time. That's it. Are they filling their cup? I mean, I, I hope so. I don't know. I mean, they're not here, so they have to be doing their own Bible study. That's that, that's rough. You know, you could be here learning. Yes, Todd. It takes effort. The Pharisees lost their heart. They, they, were, they just followed this letter of the law and they lost their heart. And Jesus told them that. They lost their heart. Effort requires heart. It does. I mean, so does cleaning out a bowl and all those other things. That requires effort. But an emotional effort is inside and it, you toss and turn at night. Um, so that's the end of this class. Um, next week, I'm going to talk about the common signs of drifting. So we can now know what drifting is. We know kind of like the dangers of it. And uh, next week we're going to talk about the common signs of it. What we can expect, what we can see, how can we can avoid it. Um, I appreciated the opportunity. Uh, let's go to God in prayer. Father God, thank you so much for uh, letting us worship you in learning your scriptures. God, thank you so much for opening our hearts tonight, I mean today. God, thank you so much for the gift of your son Jesus. Um, Lord, thank you for showing us um, that we need to be more than driftwood and that we need to be encouragers of others and that we need to step out from maybe our comfort zone and talk to others and put forth some sort of effort. God, help us to not be drifters. Help us to not skate through life. God, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. I pray you continue to watch over us today through our worship to you. Help it to be um, a beautiful fragrance to you, Lord. God, I pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.